do you have terrible internet? And when I say terrible, I mean like real bad to the point where it's almost impossible to function. Like the only thing you could possibly do is be on Facebook. Everything else is just seems out of reach. If so, I have some workarounds, some solutions, some tips to get rid of some of that anxiety of not being able to get things done because of your internet connection. These are perfect for digital nomads. If you're going around to different countries or if you're just traveling around one country to areas that have spotty reception or spotty signals, this is good for you. Yes. Hi, Natavia with Why Be Confused Because of Life is so complicated <laughs> like even internet and you know why live it in a trance because we're trying to live our best lives here people <sighs> yeah so before we get started go ahead and like comment and subscribe turn on your little notification so you can see my lovely face every time i post a new video first things first what is bad internet i can tell you I have three different routers, two different internet service providers, and my average download speed goes between a three and a 16 Mbps. If you know anything about internet speeds, that is terrible! <sighs> I'm gonna lose some. And not only do those speeds suck like royally <laughs> but um they're not even stable because i don't have cable internet that runs through a cord no i have a like hotspot mobile internet that works like the data on your phone whose idea was this whose idea was this so because of that not only am I moving at snail speed, but it always stops, it disconnects, and then I have to wait for it to come back. Or I have to move the router around my house like a mad woman trying to find the perfect signal. And I'm gonna take that back. I don't have to move the router around the house. It's normally poor Lambo because I'm glued to my desk. He's walking around the house doing this. Everybody applaud Lambo for his attempts. Because <laughs> without him to restart the internet every time it goes bad, I don't know how I'll get through a work shift. <sighs> but even with that, even with all of that, I have found a way to be as consistent as possible and just as productive as I could be in the US with great internet. Yes, I figured it out. Oh, no worries. So, as you heard, I have three routers. This is because they are all inconsistent. And the likelihood of them all going down at one time is it's pretty slim. So, with three different ones, I can make sure I am always having some way to connect, regardless of what is going crazy. Now, although I do have three routers, three different accounts um, with different data plans each, I only have two internet service providers. I have one that has two routers. Um, it is my entertainment internet and things of that sort. We'll talk about listing things. And I have another one that's a little higher speed, but it's more costly. And so, you know, we only got one router for that because I, I don't have money. A tip that I use, again, you guys know, I'm working that third shift, that, that overnight graveyard shift. So I have found that using satellite internet when other people are asleep or a time that would be less congested, oh, you get faster speeds that way. My speed at 2 p.m. versus my speed at 2 a.m., oh, night and day. So at 2 p.m., I could be getting speeds that are at five. But then at 2 a.m., I could be hitting a 15. 
Now, that's still bad, but it's a lot better than a five. So I do what I have to do. If you don't know when the most congested time is for your internet, especially if you have satellite internet, um, test it. Do a speed test using your computer. And I say using your computer because uh, phones can receive internet speeds quicker than computers. It seems like computers rate speeds at different levels. I don't understand the science or the tech behind it. I just know computers work differently. So use your computer to test these speeds and test them at different times over the course of a week to see when is the best time generally for you to be doing things. Another one that may seem like redundant or easy or common sense is use an ethernet cable. Ethernet cables give you more stable connections. Now, satellite internet is still going to be unstable because satellites move, blah, 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 blah. But it stops the Wi-Fi from being a factor in its unstable internet. Because it's not always that the router's not getting a signal. It may just be that the router's not putting out a strong enough Wi-Fi signal or something may be interfering with your Wi-Fi signal. That could be causing you to have slower speed. So Ethernet cable is your friend. Your friend. Okay. I think I was weird enough doing that part. Another tip is assign your routers to different tasks. So I have an entertainment router, I have a work router, and then I have a backup router. The reason is my entertainment router throttles. Oh, the throttle is. And for those of you who don't know what throttling is, it's when the internet company flips the switch on your speeds and tries to get you over speed so you don't use everything, even though they told you they were gonna give you an unlimited play. <laughs> throttling. Okay, so my entertainment internet throttles once we've used it for a certain amount of time within the month. While my work internet, the faster one, the one that's a little more costly, does not throttle, but it's not always as stable. So then I also have my third one, which is my backup. Because in the event that my work internet goes out, while my entertainment internet is throttling, I have a plan! You guys don't understand, it's backups upon backups upon backups. Is this the cheapest way to do these things? No, but for me, it has worked in making sure that I can remain consistent within my job and still get all my work done. I never can say that I couldn't get something done because of my internet. It is very rare since I've implemented this system that I have to like miss something because of internet. Unless, like what happened last week, all three decided to be out because internet companies were doing I don't know what and they weren't answering the phones. So it's not a foolproof plan, but we're doing the best we can over here, okay? Okay. Do you prefer doing things online or offline? I know it seems like everything is moving to more of an online platform. A lot of things like the drives, the clouds are pushing productivity to being online, but do you prefer to do your productivity stuff offline? Let me know in the comments below. I am personally an online girl because I like knowing that my things are backed up because I'm not very good at saving things. This next tip is my favorite. <laughs> and when I found out about it, I, I almost broke out in song. <laughs> Virtual desktops. <laughs> I know. So your computer may have really good specs and that's fine. But if you're having an internet problem, Purchasing a virtual desktop may be beneficial to you. I actually have two, one that I use for my job and one that I use purely for like editing and video gaming. <laughs> so the one I use for my job is Amazon Workspace. And that internet within that is so great. One, it doesn't require a lot of high speed internet to be able to connect to it. It's just an app on my desktop, I click it, I log in, my internet is used to show the desktop screen of the virtual computer to me, and then everything I do is within it, so all the internet I'm using is within that, and it's using the internet that's provided from the cloud desktop. Which, <laughs> let me tell you,
you these speeds, guys. The download speed, 326.70 Mbps. Ah. <laughs> Makes me so happy. So I can take my little five speed and get 300 speed. And all I have to worry about is every now and then not being able to see a display screen, but I'm not losing any work. And that every now and then is very rare. And all I have to do is hop over to another router. <laughs> Guys, when this came into my life, it relieved so much stress. I promise you. And then, Shadow. Wait, before we get to Shadow, I do want to give a disclaimer. Amazon Workspace is not cheap. So if you do not have a business need for having Amazon Workspace, don't do it. The only reason why I don't do everything on Shadow is because Shadow, when it disconnects, it's not, it completely logs you out when it disconnects. Workspace works a lot better when there's a connectivity problem. For example, I can hear things, but I may not be able to see anything. It may be a black screen. But if I click over, that screen pops up in like three seconds. So workspace has been better for my actual job because that requires me to be very live, very responsive. Like three seconds worth of dead time could be dire, but it's, it's, it's better than having to log back into something and be down for a minute. So yeah. That's why I, I have Amazon Workspace. I budget about $75 a month for Workspace. Um, late, as of lately, it's been around the $60 amount because I have mindset based on usage and how much I like actually use it. Um, but that's how much I'm paying for it. And when we did my budgeting video that you will see in the cards, um, you will see that I do have work-related expenses added to my budget, and I do get a tax write off because I'm not paying that much without tax write-offs. Okay. And then we have Shadow. Yes. Shadow, a lot more cost expensive. $12.99 a month is what I paid for Shadow. Now, Shadow is targeted towards gamers, first who like playing all these great games, but don't have the computer specs to be able to really get the most out of it. Especially, it seems like it's really popular among streamers. That is who Shadow is targeted to. But I found out that it works great for video editing. And I personally use DaVinci Resolve to edit my videos. And that thing is a monster of a program. So I needed better specs and a better graphic card but I wasn't buying a new computer for it. Love y'all, but I'm not making any money from this and I'm not buying a new computer for it. So, <laughs> I got Shadow and I've been doing my editing in there and then it's also great because Lambo helped me with my editing and if I log out of Shadow, he can log in and start right where I stopped without having to pay for the DaVinci Resolve Pro version that allows collaboration. <laughs> yes, okay. And guess what shadow speeds are? <laughs> Shadow's download speed is 984.55 Mbps. And I know I'm saying download speeds because that was what the big issue was for me, but the upload speeds are really good too. Now this was on a random day that I just tested these uh, it fluctuates like all internet connectivity, but it stays within that range. Got it? Got it. The last tip I can give you, and this one, I don't like it as much as the virtual devices, but this is really important for hidden things. You gotta go into your devices and cut down how much internet and broadband they're actually using. A lot of our devices are set to auto update, to have these like features that are constantly connected to the internet just in case you use it. It can be extra quick to respond to you. And if you're not using that stuff, turn them off. Because all that stuff running in the background can be actually decreasing your internet speed when you're trying to work. So like if your TV's taking internet and your phone's taking internet and like your speeds are not gonna be as great, I have seen. Now, I am not sure if this is all internet service providers. This is something I experienced when I was in Nigeria because that was the first time I actually paid attention to it. 
So I have a smart TV. I have decreased what my smart TV takes to run Netflix and things of that sort. So it's not at the highest setting. It's at more of a medium setting where it takes less gigabytes and it's using less bandwidth so I can run my other devices. I also do the same thing on my phone. I do not have anything auto update as well as my computer. So everything needs permission to do anything around here, okay? <laughs> Okay. And this helps me be able to work and maintain these, especially since here uh, we have to pay for data. There's not all these unlimited plans and the unlimited plans aren't that great. I have to be very mindful with my data usage. So that is a great tip for that. So the struggle is real and I'm out here doing my absolute best to work around all these obstacles. I know very few of you may be in Nigeria that actually watch my videos, but in rural areas of America, they have the same type of problems and this may help you too. So, let me know if this was helpful for you. Do not, and I say it again, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Well, this should be like, you know what I mean. Gosh, don't judge me. And thank you for listening to this random girl talk to you about things I'm still figuring out. And as always, have a butterfly and rainbow filled sunshine day. Bye.